Okay. All in favor of approving the minutes? Okay, I see seven. Um, okay, so uh, we do have committee reports this evening. Um, we'll start with audit committee. Do you have anything for us, Victoria, or does somebody else want to speak for? Yeah. So I guess the next meeting would be with our external auditors. That'll probably be in May or June before they start the um, process of closing the books for the 2022-23 school year. Um, but as soon as I get a date from them, I will pass it on to the audit committee. Okay, and you can decide whether you want to do it in Zoom. They won't have much information for you. They're just going to go through the process that they're going to use in, in uh, closing the books, right, at that point. Um, so you can either do that by Zoom or in person. Okay, um, policy committee. We, our next meeting is the 19th. Is that right? I don't. I don't recall those on either. But we're still working on our meeting. Thanks, Megan. Um, facilities report, Victoria. Right. So instead of talking about the little things that we always are doing around the um, the district, um, I would like to speak to you about FEMA and Storm Ida, and let you know that we are very, very close to the end of that process. Actually, it's on the desk of some Congress person. We don't know who for approval. Also, the state has it because the state remembers paying 10% of the claim. So right now, 90% is coming from the federal FEMA and 10% is coming from the state. So I'm scheduled to have a talk with our state rep as long as she agrees with all the paperwork that went in um, to the portal of FEMA, uh, which is, has, everything is in. Um, we should hear, I'm hoping within the next month that it has changed from, you know, pending to approved. And then hopefully uh, the district will see a check from FEMA for a little over $4 million and the rest of it will come um, from the state. Anybody have questions about that? Or? Thanks, Victoria. Go ahead. So I'm just going to comment on something that, um, again, uh, in regard to our capital projects, they are well underway to preparing for this summer's work. Um, this summer's work is lengthy. And so please go back to our website uh, under the facilities page. There is just a uh, an ongoing, always updated uh, document that will give the community an understanding just what's being done over the next couple of years in regard to not only our bond, but any capital projects that are being done. Um, along those lines, I do have to say that yesterday we took a walk with the, um, the architect, um, and our science coordinator and our director of uh, food service uh, to and our high school principal to go over uh, preliminary uh, sketches and, and floor plans um, so that he can begin to prepare what needs to go up to state ed in regard to the construction in our uh, high school to include the bathrooms that are on the board, on the bond, the cafeteria, as well as brand new science labs. Um, and we're very excited about that. But even though that, that's not gonna happen until the summer of 24, uh, it is a process that's already started at, uh, at another point. Our board will be reviewing the uh, sketches before they go up to, uh, well before they go up to state ed. This does not include furniture, um, but our science coordinator representing the science department was very, very excited, a little stressed, uh, but very excited about uh, the plans and what's being done 
um, as was uh, Carly Pressure, our director of food service. So we look forward to all of those, but just to give the community an understanding, the process is well underway. Um, approval from the state has already come down for those projects that are being done this summer, includes brand new lockers, includes our tennis courts, includes our uh, turf field. So a lot of exciting things are happening and obviously uh, the doors that are being replaced in the district district wide. So um, just know that although we haven't seen construction, there's a lot of paperwork to ensure that we are reimbursed for the state aid and we get the approval to move forward. And that is all underway. Approvals have been given by the state and we move forward. Victoria, did I sum that up pretty? Well, the only other thing was the uh, energy performance. Um, we closed on that loan agreement um, the the, the uh, lawyers are just looking at the certificate of insurance to make sure the district is covered. And I would think by before the break, hopefully we're going to give the go ahead to the ESCO to start ordering um, the solar for the schools and the lighting and ceilings and everything like that. And they will probably start first. So I guess the first thing you're going to see happening in the district is from the energy performance contract um, because we had worked on that before the bond. So um, hopefully by another month or so, um, we will see things happen. And again, we will be updating that page to keep the community uh, updated as to the progress. Okay. Oh yeah, jump right in. All right. So superintendent's report tonight, um, I cannot, do the superintendent's report without mentioning that this weekend, Friday night and Saturday night, the high school will feature Miss Saigon. We're very, very excited to see what um, is there. But again, our performances are students, always a spectacular event. So if you haven't gotten tickets, there is a link on our website uh, for tickets and some can be purchased at the door as well. Something very special, and we, we did it on a much smaller scale uh, last year, but I think the, uh, those members that are involved in Miss Saigon, usually the Thursday before the weekend, um, there is a full dress rehearsal. And as a result of knowing that everyone's going to be in full dress to rehearse this um, play from beginning to end, we decided that um, once again, we would invite our seniors to come in and uh, be a part of that particular performance. So there is a special performance uh, for the cast and crew. It's called the full dress rehearsal, but for our seniors in the community um, and Lawrence uh, Nadal, our coordinator of fine arts, as well as our staff, has reached out to local churches, to local um, senior centers, uh, to inch and to retirement homes, um, so that anyone who would like to come in that is uh, a senior will be uh, more than welcome to a free performance tomorrow night, actually tomorrow afternoon, I think it begins at four o'clock um, at the high school. So we're really looking forward to that. And I want to thank Carly Persher and the director of food service, who will also be uh, providing uh, some refreshments for our, our community members. Uh, so far, we had about 150 people that we know are going to be at that performance. But if you are a senior citizen and are not able to attend Friday or Saturday, please feel free to either contact us prior to 4.30 or at the door, uh, we will be more than happy to welcome you in, okay? Um, there's been a couple of uh, parent universities and uh, last week we hosted the digital safety uh, night. It was held at the middle school, um, two separate workshops, one for uh, elementary school parents uh, parents of elementary school students, 
another for our secondary students as they begin to use certain devices. I wanna thank our local police department and our uh, assistant chief, um, Chris Ortiz, for coming in and really giving us an understanding of how we can keep our students safe as well as uh, supervise our students, uh, our children when they are on social media. So uh, it was an interesting night. I wanna thank Jessica McKenna, Giselle Taylor, uh, Alexa Doshner. Um, translation, translators were also available for anyone who uh, needed that to happen. Um, it was a, a very interesting topic of conversation and I, I think uh, we look forward to more of that. Um, next week, big night. Alexa, do you wanna tell a little bit about that because you have actually uh, been involved in the creation of that evening. Sure, so next week we have Family Stream Night. It's April 4th. Uh, it begins at six in the evening. It's gonna be held here at Glen Cove High School. We have a letter posted on our website with a QR code, and I encourage families to go on the website so that they can learn more about it. Um, this, I believe, will be our fourth family stream night. Uh, we've always ha held these events, and they've been very well attended. Uh, we have uh, the ability to invite both parents and students at the same time, and we like to share what our students learn in stream during that evening. So our parents get to participate. They get to learn right um, besides our students and then they also the students kind of serve as teachers so it's a very positive event and we again look forward to a very uh, wonderful turnout so again that's April 4th and it begins at 6 p.m here in Glen Cove High School thank you so much and uh, due to COVID a lot of these events could not occur but I am really looking forward to the return of uh, that evening because it has been a very popular one um, and it's wonderful watching students uh, teach their parents the different uh, types of activities that they go through. So thank you for that. And that is the superintendent's report. Thank you. Oh, this, do we have a budget presentation? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I got so wrapped up in all the great events that I forgot my favorite person's presentation. Um, Victoria Galante, our assistant superintendent for uh, business, please uh, come up and help us to see the, and, and understand the budget as we begin our, uh, well, the end of our budget process um, and start to prepare for our budget vote, which this year is on May 16th. It is the third Tuesday. It's called Super Tuesday. All districts um, use that day for the approval or the vote on their 2023-24 budget. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Rihanna, and good evening, everyone. Doing uh, the presentation in the cafeteria brings back some very fond memories. Uh, but anyway, so again, uh, last board meeting, the full budget was presented. And what we're going to do tonight is just go over some of the major slides and um, the, the board was kind enough to send questions. I have about four or five pages of questions and answers. I'm not going to go through them. We, instead, we will post them on the website so everyone can read them. Um, at, at you know at your own leisure and if you have any questions then you can contact me so tonight we're going to talk about the tax levy limit and we're going to talk about the whole budget for the 2023-24 school year okay so the allowable levy limit reported to the office of the state controller that uh needed to be done by march 1st is 2.52 percent um, yes, it is over 2%. And if you remember what I said last board meeting, that 2% is only for the CPI. Nothing can be more than 2% for your CPI. So even if our CPI, our inflation is 8% this year, the, the max that could be in that formula is only 2%. With this 2.52%, 
that is the legal uh, levy limit. We do not need a supermajority. It's 50% plus one vote um, in order for the budget to pass. And again, the um, budget is presented here by component. And once again, I'm not going line by line. On this slide, there is not much of an increase, maybe in the Office of Finance and Business. And that is because we had to increase our lines for legal advertising because, because of the bond, because of the extensions, because of the EPC, we will have to go out to bid on some of the jobs. Some maybe not. If they're off a state federal contract, BOCES contract, we don't have to go out to bid. But I'll tell you right now, we just put a bid in Newsday that'll be in our Monday's paper for the project for the uh, middle school patio that's going to be done this summer because the, um, the price that came in from the vendor that is on a contract was high. So the architect said, let's go out to bid. So that will be in the newspaper on uh, Newsday on Monday. And again, anytime we put something in a newspaper, it costs money um, to, to advertise. So that's, that kind of is part of that increase. Um, on this slide, again, Office of Personnel, not much of an increase due to contractual obligations and BOCES, they, they do use BOCES. Uh, for recruitment and also for advertising. So that basically um, is part of that increase. Insurance. Um, like everything else, insurance is going up. And we just received an email. I just received an email from our insurance company saying that it may go up even more. Um, but it's something that we have to have. And I have to say, we do use our insurance coverage um, only because a lot of times we have uh, emergency projects. Things leak, we get floods, things fall down from the ceiling, the, the, the middle school, the patio, that area, that part of that is being covered by insurance. So um, yes, we, we have to pay the increases, but it's um, something that we definitely can't skimp on. And again, the, the last two um, codes, again, not much of, a, of an increase. And for the administrative component, the um, increase was $286,000, basically, um, which is not really that much of an increase. The next component is our capital. And here you will see some, some lines went down, um, some lines went up. Um, but I'll let's go to refund real property taxes. That's the tax rates that you have to pay. And I have to say, with some you know, caution that we haven't seen a lot of these tax rates come through lately. At first, we were told it was because of COVID. But now, you know, we're out of COVID a good year and a half, and we still haven't seen a lot of them. So we're kind of saying that we are anticipating that 500, spending about $550,000. Uh, but the question comes up, what happens if you need more? So if we need more, we have a reserve for our um, tax certs, and we just have to have the board give permission for us, the district, to take additional money out of that, that reserve during the school year so we would be able to pay it. Um, and then again, I explained last board meeting that instead of having all the money we borrow under bond principal and interest, I kind of broke it out because we, we do have a bond. That's your old bond. That's going to fall off in about another, I think after this year, you have another two to three years on that bond. And then that will fall off. And it'll always be, it's 250000 for principal and 25000 for interest. So in about three years, that's going to fall off, but it's going to be replaced by your new bond payment. So that will help your new bond payment. If your new bond payment comes in at, you know, 575 already or 275 that you already is, has been in your budget. So the increase won't be that much for you. Uh, the ban is what we, it's called a bond anticipation note. 
So for next year, instead of going out and borrowing money for the bond that we're going to have to pay uh, principal and interest on, we're just going to pay interest on the money, but we're going to have to pay it back within one year. And then we'll go out for the true bond because we're not going to borrow that much money um, next year for the bond because we're not doing as much work as we're doing in 2024. So remember when the bond went out, we said we're not going to go out and borrow $30 million all at once. We're going to try to piecemeal it according to what we need for that year. So we're anticipating borrowing about $7 million come July 1st um, for next year for the work that's going to be done through the bond. So, with, But at that point, it's only a ban, and we'll pay it back right away. And then the other um, borrowing that you're going to have now, and you're going to have this for the next 13 years, is your EPC, your lease purchase, principal, and interest. And that's for all your energy performance work that's going to get done within the district. And then you have your million dollar transfer to capital, uh, which again, we're trying to keep that in our budget because it gives us the opportunity to do work that is on that edge of being emergency work. Okay. So for, for next year, with that million dollars, we want to target the middle school PA system, fire alarm system, and the clocks. Okay. It is desperately needed in the middle school, these systems. There are some parts of the building that have a hard time hearing PA announcements and things like that. So, and again, it's almost like the high school was a few years ago. It is, it is at its end of life and we don't want to happen what happened at the high school where we had to go on 24 seven fire watch because that cost the district a lot of money that was really not necessary if you can address these issues before that happens. And the last part of the budget component is um, program. And again, this is the biggest part of your budget. Um, again, the, the, the line that's a little glaring out there is your teaching special ed. Um, I know the district is looking into ways um, um, that the district can provide the services that our special ed population needs, but in a less costly way. And there are ways to do that. Um, so we're working on that um, and we're going to, um, probably even try to bring some students back into district that are out of district. Again, that's that saves the district money in the long run. So again, it's not gonna happen overnight, but we are addressing it. It's on everyone's radar. Um, and during next year, um, I'm hoping when the next budget presentation for the 24-25 school year comes up, we won't see that significant increases anymore. Um, <clears throat> this slide basically, um, computer assisted instruction in that we added some money for a new software for our camera system for our security. Again, much needed. Um, the, the software we have is old. It takes a long time for principals to find what they're looking for when they have to scroll through all those little, you know, clips. So, this, this will really streamline it for them. Um, there's a lot of times things happen and we get a request from the police department asking to see our cameras and our video. And it would be nice if it could be something that, you know, it didn't take our security uh, supervisor or the person in IT who does it hours to find what they're looking for. Um, not much changes on these lines, so I'll just skip to the next. Contract transportation, again, the CPI for, for transportation is different than the CPI 2% cap that we're, that's in our formula that we have to use. They can go up. It could be 6 7 8%, their increase. So between their increase and also, you know, we kind of try to put in one or two more buses because or vans because we never know the needs um, at the time of the budget. So that accounts for that increase. 
Um, again, the two retirement system, the employee retirement system went up slightly, the teacher re retirement system went down slightly. So it's almost, almost a wash between them. FICA is the amount of taxes that we have to pay on our payroll. And that always goes up because payroll's uh, expense is up. Health insurance. Okay, another area that has gone up dramatically, put that right in there, health insurance and regular insurance, both of them basically the same. Um, again, um, I, Dr. Uh, Rihanna, myself, actually just received an email from a company who says they can give us something in conjunction with NYSHIP, our, our carrier. So I told Dr. Uh, Rihanna I would look into it. And we'll see what else is out there. If we can offer our employees um, a less expensive coverage, if they want that, we're not getting rid of nice ship. Don't, you know, I don't want anyone to think that, uh, but we're trying to get something um, that would work along with nice ship for anyone who wanted to go that option. So on the dollar change for the um, program component, it's over a little over $5 million. And if we add up all the um, com components, the uh, budget for the 23-24 school year would be $107,999,370. This year, you only have to vote on one proposition, the budget. Remember last year, you had three propositions to, to vote on. This year is only one, uh, the budget vote, and that's May 16th of this year. Um, polling places are the same, and we'll give you more information about that when we do the um, budget hearing. Uh, we'll also talk about the um, contingency budget, what happens if the budget fails, uh, and we'll show you the slide um, that we have to submit for that um, at the next, at the budget hearing presentation. Um, that's all I have for now. The board members who gave me some questions, did you have any, you were good with the answers? They made sense, Maria? Yeah, yes? <laughs> okay. No, I, I think so. I think, uh, thank you very much for all your time and energy into putting our budget together, Victoria. I appreciate it. You're, you're quite welcome. Anybody have questions? No one else? Okay. Um, I guess next is Aiden. The, you want to give your report? Yeah. I would just like to address the budget and just give like the student perspective as to why I feel like it's important. So as an incoming high school student, I was clueless as to how I wanted to navigate my education. My intellectual interests were too obscure and the foresight of my potential career was little to none. Now, after four years at Glen Cove High School, I've experienced firsthand the unparalleled openness and opportunism at our school, which was essential in helping me fine tune my career goals. With our extensive selection of advanced placement co college courses, I was able to explore my academic curiosities to gain insight into my passions and prepare for how I want to further my education at college. In addition to our abundance of academic offerings, I had the opportun opportunity to broaden my horizons in Glen Cove's unmatched fine arts department, playing saxophone in the wind ensemble. After hearing stories about how Glen Cove High School's choir, Select Chorale, sang for the Pope in 2015, I knew that Glen Cove's music department held something spectacular. Attending concerts and repeatedly witnessing our Select Chorale having audience members tear up just reaffirmed my beliefs. Myself, my fellow classmates, and previous Glen Cove students thrived due to the wide range of educational and artistic opportunities presented at Glen Cove High School allowing students to explore areas which may be unfamiliar to truly understand their passions and goals. With prices on the rise and rapidly progressing te technological advancements, passing the budget is vital to keeping Glen Cove's vibrant learning environment alive and well. Continuing to support our programs and facilities will give current and future students of Glen Cove the opportunity to receive an exceptional, well-rounded educational experience. Our administrators even have intentions of adding new coursework in the following year more courses in the performing arts, from understanding the ins and outs of theater to the fundamentals of dance. French is being added as an option for middle schoolers, giving them more of a foreign language selection. STEM courses as well, such as scientific research course, 
where students can conduct research and experiments to further their understanding of the sciences. Building up our community begins with investing in its future, and that's the students of Glen Cove. Thank you. Excellent Aiden, report. Aiden, I want to thank you for that. Um, it's great to hear that a student's perspective, you know, a student's perspective, and you know, I love listening to, um, to that. You actually, you and your classmates have actually helped to move our programs forward by giving us feedback uh, as you went through your, your high school years. Um, have you made a selection? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> I'm indecisive, but right. first. So I'm sure that will come up soon, but I am sure that as you go through the selection, you'll make the one that's best for you. I also hope that you bring with you to your colleges, um, wherever that may be and whatever your major may be, the curiosity, the ability to expand your knowledge base and to look into areas that um, you may not have been, uh, you may not have explored in the past. But I do know this, I am so happy you are part of our future. So thank you again. Okay, moving on to uh, public participation. Um, if anybody has questions or comments about agenda items only, uh, you can come up to the podium, sign in with Ida, who have three minutes to speak. Any takers? Going? Gone. Oh, okay, moving on. Just, Ooh, I, I, I can't. I'm, I'm sorry. I was listening to Aiden speak. And you all know my babies graduated June of 2022. And I'm listening to you. And in my head, I am hearing all the conversations. Five of my six are Glen Cove. And, and I'm hearing in the back of my head all of the conversations from Michaela and Isaiah and Elijah and Alina and Elena. And I'm hearing all of the I'm, I'm having the memories of the White House and, and Disney and, and, and the Pope and what strikes me and, and how my kids talk of how my kids' college experience is being filtered through their Glen Cove experience. And what impresses me the reason when we moved here, I, this this was going to be a quick stop. I was going to go back to Queens to be near my mom. <laughs> I missed my mom. I am so thankful for this Glen Cove system. It's not just the books, the teachers, the staff. It 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 gives these kids something that sits in the middle of their hearts. And it, and it helps push them forward and it helps them dig deep inside of themselves and it helps them to say, I can do that thing, even if I do it scared, but I can do that thing. And they know that if they miss a step, there's always, am I kidding? There's always somebody who is right there who will help them get up and help them dust themselves off and try it again and 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 maneuver better and yada 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 and it's a beautiful thing to see and and i i can't i mean we landed here kind of by accident but it was the best thing for my kids it really was and and these kids the, the kids the families they're really blessed this is a special place and it just it, it it just really is. Sorry, <laughs> I just I couldn't. <laughs> you no, sorry gets me. <laughs> okay, uh, let's move on to the instructional report. Um, can I get a motion from Maureen? And oh, sorry, I'm gonna rest you. I guess. Based on the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, I asked the Board of Education to approve agenda item seven on the instructional report A, Committee on Special Education, and B, Committee on Preschool Special Education. Can I get a motion? Angela and Ann. 
Any questions? Okay. All in favor? Okay, seven. Upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, a motion is requested for the approval of agenda item E, business affairs A, finance one and two. Can I get a motion? Leah and Maureen, any questions? All in favor? Okay. Upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, a motion is requested for the approval of agenda item A, business affairs B, one through 10. Can I get a motion, Angela and Maureen or Megan? Any questions on this? Um, okay. I, I actually have, uh, I just wanted clarification, and, and I think I asked you about this before. So we're accessing a lot of equipment, and what um, what's the process for that? How does that, Victoria or Brian? Can okay, so when we access equipment, if it's tagged um, as part of our capital asset inventory, we have to make sure that it comes off our spreadsheet. So when we close at the end of the year, the depreciation doesn't come, you know, is not calculated on these uh, pieces of equipment. If it's, um, you know, uh, IT equipment, sometimes we just sell it. We have, there are companies out there that buy it. And I think, let's say last year, we probably got about, I don't know, $20,000 mm -hmm. for giving them this equipment that we no longer use. If it's books, they just, you know, they can get donated or just trash them, unfortunately, um, depending how old they are. There are some companies who will buy certain codes mm -hmm. books. Um, so we usually do that route first, if we can get a company to come in and even just take them, not even buy them if they want. Mm -hmm. um, so we do all, all that, um, but before we do that, it has to be on here because the orders are to make sure that the support pay, the tags, are no longer on our list because they got access. Okay, thanks for that additional information, Victoria. I appreciate it. Um, the other thing is, I think um, if you could just speak to the five towns um, agreement that we're adopting, either you or Alexis. So we did a presentation on some courses uh, earlier this year. Uh, we are approving a contract with five towns so that students taking courses here at Glen Cove High School can um, have the option of getting college credits um, towards uh, their college careers in the area in which um, they are interested. So it's a dual enrollment course um, and we have several of them. Um, I, I, this is, there's 11 of them for uh, five times colleges. They have been meeting with us and with Alexa to ensure that um, what we offer here can be transferred um, and used towards the dual enrollment. So it increases the opportunities for our students in a number of areas uh, to be able to get college credit uh, at the high school level. Thanks, Brian. Um, does anybody else have questions or comments on these items before we vote? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Leah? Okay, that's seven. All right. At this point, I'd like to uh, thank those who have made donations to the district. We got a call from an artist um, who has uh, a number of art supplies at her home. And she wanted to provide them to uh, a local school district because um, she's getting on in the years and aren't able to, to work in her craft as she did years ago and hopes that this would be able to provide students opportunities to seek their own talents. And so I thank uh, Ms. Joan Ryan uh, for her generous contribution of art supplies to our district. Um, the other is, uh, we got another call 
from a person in the district who had long ago bought the wrong paper for uh, a printer that she was using. Uh, she asked if any of our district printers could use this paper. She was going to discard it. And uh, as a result, we did find that we do use this paper in the district. So again, I thank Cecilia Peebles for her generous uh, donation to our school. Thank you for thinking of our children. Thank you. Okay, so we're up to personnel. Based upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, I asked the board to approve agenda item nine, personnel A certified one through seven. Can I get a motion? Uh, Angela and Ann, any questions? In a, um, all in favor? Seven, okay. All right, so I need to take a minute now because this is a big deal. Um, significant members of our community, of our school community, have decided that it's time for them to uh, retire. They have been part of, a big part of the impact on many, many children, current and past in the district. And so I want to say that the Board of Education has, um, with very mixed emotions, has uh, accepted the resignations of the following people, the retirements of the following people. Ms. Melanie Orfman, Ms. Francine Santoro, Ms. Cassandra Shannon, Mr. Steve Koshenda, and Franca Martinovic. All in different capacities have dedicated many, many years to this district. We cannot just say thank you. It is just not fitting. So we thank you twice. We thank you three times. We truly thank you for your commitment to the children of the Glen Cove community. On behalf of the Board of Ed, I'd like to thank all those wonderful people too. Um, we appreciate all your years of service and we'll miss you, but we'll see you around, I hopefully. Um, Okay, so moving on, uh, personnel. Based upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, I asked the board to approve agenda item 9B, personnel B classified, one through six. Uh, can I motion? Megan and Lynn? Any comments? No, uh, all in favor? Seven. Okay. Oh, wait. You um, yeah. Something to say there. So, um, another big part of our school district is our food service. And those who have also dedicated so many years to helping feed our children. I would like to uh, thank Sylvia Vickers, otherwise known as Ann Vickers, for her many years of service in the Glen Cove school district. She is the cook manager at Connolly School in the recent years. Thank you so much for your dedication to our children. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so we're up to un unfinished business, of which there is none. New business. Anybody have anything? No? Um, any board comments? Anybody want to share? And please don't um, tell me you have a cowbell. <laughs> I did bring you one. I know. You did. I'm looking at Aiden because um, he participated in the district games this past Friday on the 24th. And I just want to thank the community. It was such a well attended event and it brought everybody back together. It was great. It really, really was. And I want to thank all the students that participated from elementary all the way to high school, um, the mascot, uh, and congratulations to the red team. The red team did win. <laughs> so congratulations to them. But 
I just really want to thank um, the community coming out together uh, for this wonderful event. So thank you. Anybody else have anything? No? Okay. I just wanted to um, say thank you to PTA Council for the wonderful work you did for the Diamond Award event that some of us attended on Saturday. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was really nice to see um, community members honored and I think it was a success from what I could tell. So thanks very much for that. Um, okay, so we're, we have our last public participation. I was I was oh. just going to mention, I forgot oh. about Shrek, Jun uh, Shrek Jr. at the middle school was so good. It was great. I'm excited about Miss Saigon. My daughter, it was like her first live theater and it was wonderful. So well done, everyone. Thanks, Megan. Okay, so um, uh, yeah, last public participation. Any items? Three minutes. Okay. All right, I see no takers. Um, so I guess we are adjourned. Uh, can I get a motion? Leah and Maureen. <laughs> All in favor at seven. And I wanna thank uh, Glen Cove TV for your fine work recording our meeting in the cafeteria tonight. Everybody have a good night. Thank you. <laughs>